Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to install the Windows 2000 control panel using the installer I made and the NSIS and also have a zip which should also patch the system banners for you. Uh, so I'll show you how to use both of those. So you just, in order to download any of these, you just click on them and then click this little download raw file. And then it will give you that. I already have it even there. So I'll put a link in the description. <coughs> so I have uh, Windows and Experience Patcher already loaded on here, but this, as long as you use. Uh, this zip afterwards it should do the same thing as an experience patcher I'm not sure why I installed it on here to be honest but one thing you'll notice like I open up this command prompt and it shows XP and go to system properties and it says XP and if I go to Winver then it will say Windows 2002 and then show the XP NT version but this should patch all of that. And like I said, you don't you probably don't even need to install an experience patcher. Uh but first or let me show you how to take care of Windows file protection first. because uh, that'll be very necessary. So you're gonna wanna open up Reg Edit by clicking Windows key and R. And that's it right there, or E G E D I T. Let me get the resolution up. Not sure. I thought I had uh yeah, I do have the guest editions. That is weird. Let me see something. You auto resize. There we go. That's a lot better. But that's it. R A G E D I T, and then that'll bring you here. And then you're gonna go H key local machine software Microsoft. And you scroll down to Windows NT current version, and then Win Logon. That's where you're gonna want to scroll down right here right on the right, and you find S F C disable. And it should say zero if file protection's on. You change it to one, like I have here. Then you should be good there. But in my experience, it never turns it off, even after that. But after you do that, just reboot. And after you reboot, open up services uh, by typing in services.msc, like right there. And this service it seems to be the most important for keeping not only disabled but making sure that the service doesn't start up again because it'll do that like once or twice after you disable it and the next one I disable is protected storage and I'm not sure if this one's important but I just do it just in case and then even after that one thing I want to do is because this is something that I just started doing. And it seems to make file protection turn off a lot more for certain. Let's go to System32. And see that DLL catch folder? Uh, it's a hidden folder, so you'd want to go to Folder Options, View. And then make sure you have Show the hidden files and don't hide the protected operating system files and I move that to my desktop and once you do that it'll be empty it'll give you like an error because it's not going to completely move it uh, and then another thing is I was like uh, oh where's the oh there the search is I was thinking uh, well I know that there's SFC commands so I guess that there's an EXC that it runs from so search up SFC and then sure enough there it is so I found that during this part 
it'll replace itself right back there if this service starts back up again. Uh, so delete that. Delete, or I'm not sure if, I think you can't delete those. I just like rename them like that. And see, Windows Fog Protection. See, it started itself, and it didn't even update right there. Yeah, once it started showing that, I knew that was what was going on. I hit refresh, and you see it came back. So, delete it again. And then eventually, that little pop-up's just not going to pop up. So, c.dll. <coughs> Because if you hover over it, they even say Windows File Protection. But I find that just deleting a few is good enough. And then now we're all ready uh, for doing our own patching. So we run the Wasp Poised NT5 CPL that's on the GitHub. And the default folder will be C. But if your XP is like for some reason running at D or something, you can change it to that. But this will overwrite all the files. So we click install, completed, and we can close that. And then go into control panel. You'll see that, see, look at that. That's exactly from Windows 2000. So now we got the Windows 2000 control panel items completely and another thing that was very cool is when using the inexperience patcher and you'd use the control panel of xp and you'd like change the theme it'd still show like that windows xp theme thing but now using the windows 2000 control panel you don't have to worry about that and it even includes this text services that's you know in windows 2000 but not here and then, oh yeah, just do that. See, and then it will update that your system properties for you just by running that, so you don't have to patch it yourself. And it's the exact Windows 2000 system properties with, see, the user profiles from it. Click on performance, that pops up just like Windows 2000. Same keyboard same sound although I need to get the right <laughs> uh, accounts thing you know I'll do that in the next installer update something like that if I can figure it out but this date and times from Windows 2000 and as you can see it pulls from this operating system like all just everything uh, that these CPLs need but it's so cool, because then you just have the actual UI, you know. And I need to change uh, <laughs> to the classic start menu. But now, after installing the control panel through the EXC, uh, you open up this zip. And... What the heck? <laughs> uh, I don't know if I trust that. I don't know what that error was. Uh, there we go. Okay. What is it talking about? Here, let's check this. Yeah, it seems to have everything. I included a readme inside of it, too. What is that? Oh, that's where it extracted to. All right. Well, in order to install this, because I could not get that installer to install these files, so I just put them off with the, in a zip to do the manual process. That way you aren't doing the complete, like everything manual anymore, though. Like the V1, because I had it all, and then just too many errors are coming up. But in order to install this, you just drag your corresponding file and then replace it with my patched one and you go to system 32 and then this will include those banners uh, so you won't even need resource hacker and then potentially won't even need inexperience patcher 
not sure what it would include that this wouldn't have if I was even installing it uh, without an experience patcher. And as right there. So you just drag it to your desktop, the MS Gina. And then we do this. And then shell 32. Oh yeah, why am I? Shell 32. We just drag that to the desktop, replace it. So now with those replaced, I bet we're gonna have to reboot to, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's hope that it replaced the banners. Yeah, it did. Cool. But yeah, this would be able to replace that experience patcher because it would patch that start button to everything. And then plus you get the control panel exactly like and I even included uh, the 3D maze from Windows 2000 copied the file and put it in the installer as well and then I also included the 3D flying objects uh, right there. It'll say OpenGL version. But yeah, and then I can go to Winver and then see it has the exact uh, one as Windows 2000. Although it has the 8-bit one, but I like the 8-bit one more. It just looks a lot nicer. That's the one they have on that Windows 2000 shirt, too. But yeah, that's how you install both of those. Although, one other thing that you can do is patch your NTOS kernel by using these. But I don't have Resource Hacker on here. So this is what it would all be able to do if you didn't want to mess with Resource Hacker at all. Or if you didn't want to mess with an experience patcher, it should have all of the icons patched and everything too with the replace shell 32. So you don't need uh, an experience patcher for this. And then it will give you the correct banners. But yeah, thanks for watching. And you can just go to that github wasp poison slash wasp poison that's where you get the files